Hi. This video is a part of a mini video series about finding the low risk investment. Uh, the lowest risk investment is incredibly important either um, as the base on which we can build a riskier portfolio of assets or if you have absolutely no appetite for risk, the lowest risk investment is an incredibly important uh, investment in its own right. So your choice depends on your currency. If you are a US dollar denominated investor, uh, short term US government bonds are a great choice. Um, there is um, probably no genuinely riskless security anywhere in the world today. But the probability that the U.S. government will default on its obligations, at least in the short term, is extraordinarily low and is therefore the best choice for that. Um, that same holds true in other currencies where you have um, similarly highly rated government bonds. I'll be going through which one that is and also what to do in the case where you don't uh, invest in a currency where that's the case. In other later videos, I'll also walk through why traditionally low risk assets or known as low risk assets like gold or property or physical assets are not a good choice for your minimal risk investments. And I'll also walk through why cash in the bank is not without risk and risks you need to be aware of. Um, my name is Lars Croyer. I'm a former hedge fund manager who has written a couple of books about finance and I'm now doing these videos as a hobby. I, I want to start by showing how the lowest risk uh, investment depends on the currency you invest in. Let's suppose you have um, an investor who has $100 for which he buys a U.S. government bond. Compare that to uh, another investor who is a U.K. based investor who has 80 pounds and a dollar sterling conversion of 125 buys the same $100 um, U.S. government bond. Now let's go five years into the future and the, you get $110 back, let's say, for, uh, for that government bond that's appreciated in value with interest um, over those five years. Um, so the $110 will always be $110, which the U.S. investor gets back. But we don't know the pound value of the $110. So from the perspective of the sterling-based investor, um, he is taking more risk for the same expected return because we don't know the future dollar sterling currency exchange rate. So if your base currency is one where the government credit is of the highest quality, that's generally going to be a great choice for your minimal risk assets. So while the base currency for most investors will obvious, it's sterling for UK investors, it's dollars for US investors and so forth, it can also be a mix of currencies. So think of it essentially as the currency in which you will one day need the assets. So what you have here is the bond ratings for the three most popular agencies, uh, Moody's, S&P, and Fitch. They go from prime all the way down to default. If we look at S&P as the, um, the one in the middle, you can see the highest is AAA and all the way down to, to single D. Uh, ratings change uh, frequently. So check out Google Finance, Wikipedia um, for government current government bond ratings. Um, my view is that if your government bond is is uh, rated double A, then it's probably a pretty good choice for minimal risk assets. You could you can mix up a couple if you're not uh, comfortable taking uh, the risk of just one government. Uh, but in any case, you're you're dealing with very high credit quality uh, uh, bonds at that at that point. Um, of course, ratings are not always right. Uh, you know things move quickly in the real world, and the agencies don't always update. It. Uh, the ratings right away. Um, so check out if your real return on your bond is very high. If it is, it suggests that the credit quality has changed dramatically. Um, your current market suggests, this is in uh, March 2017, that US, UK, Germany, uh, Japan, and another couple are are all very low risk and therefore excellent choices for um, your minimal risk assets. But again, do your own work and have a look at the current market. So if your base currency is one without a highly rated government bond available, you have a tougher choice. Um, for all the huge success of countries like Brazil, Mexico, and India over the last decades, they currently don't have a AAA, AA uh, government bond available. Um, and as an investor in those currencies, you're forced to either take credit risk with that local government bond, or currency risk if you put your money in US, UK, Japanese, uh, and German bonds, etc., that are highly, highly rated. Um, you could consider a money in a local local bank, but that's not without its risks. And of course, there's a reason why in, in places like India that the proportion of 
the population that holds gold as a security asset is much higher. I think that has its own issues, obviously, um, but it's because the local government bond is not uh, of particularly high credit quality. Um, in those countries, I'd encourage you strongly to think if you, as your security asset, have the local government bond, um, do think how, in the case of default, that would impact your other assets. So if you're Indian and you say, my lowest risk investment is, is Indian government bonds, and they default, God forbid, um, that's very likely to lead to severe hardship in other parts of your life. Your house has gone down well, your other investments are toast, um, your, your job prospects are much less, less uh, favorable than they used to be. So that's perhaps a reason to consider diversifying into higher credit quality government bonds like the US, UK, Japan, uh, Germany, etc. So I refer to government bonds, but what we're really after is the lowest risk investment in, in your currency. In some countries, there are uh, domestic bonds um, uh, related to the sovereign issue, such as municipal bonds that have tax advantages, and by all means, use those. Um, but uh, be absolutely sure that what your, your, the credit quality in times of distress, that if you are, for example, getting much higher returns, so that's not tax advantages, but return advantages, there's probably a reason for that. And it could be that in the case of default, you're not protected by the sovereign government or the federal government. Um, and therefore, uh, you should be cautious of that. So typically, when I say government bonds, it is the sovereign issue. So it's the US federal government, it's the UK government, it's the Japanese government, the German government, and so forth, not the state or city level. Um, because there's sometimes nuances around that. But in some cases, there are genuine tax advantages. Take advantage of those and think about them, but just be absolutely sure what happens in times of great distress and default. So even in the case where you have a highly rated government bond available, you could still say, well, I, I just don't feel comfortable uh, having just one bond as my, my lowest risk asset. So say I'm a UK investor, I could say, well, I'm okay with taking a bit of currency risk, um, but because I don't want to just have the UK government uh, bond be my, my, my minimal risk asset. In doing so, you would actually create slightly a hedge. In the online scenario, the UK government defaults, it's highly, highly likely that the UK sterling would uh, depreciate significantly in value. And you're now foreign, diversified foreign holdings of government bonds, such as U US, Germany, Japan, and so forth, would have gone up massively in, in, um, in sterling terms. And, and you would actually have been, been hedged very well in that scenario. It's not as low risk, because you would have taken currency risk. And it's, of course, possible that there would be trouble in those other uh, currencies, too. But it would, if you're not comfortable just taking single credit uh, risks such as the UK government bond, it could be a very good alternative. So here I've made a, uh, a sheet with a summary of recommendations. I know it's been a lot to take in. It's important you do your own work, um, particularly because the credit quality of various government bonds will change uh, continuously. Uh, in the left-hand column, you have the, the base currencies, the so US dollars, euro, sterling, etc. Um, and uh, in the center column, I have uh, my suggested minimal risk asset. At this point, this shouldn't be a huge surprise to you. It's basically the domestic uh, government bond, uh, depending on your currency. Um, if you have a, a base currency uh, that it doesn't have a very highly rated government bond available, I'd suggest that you do a, a um, accept the currency risk and do a mix of the world leading government bonds, such as the US, Germany, sterling, etc. Um, I also have made an alternative column, which is essentially you say, well, we take the currency risk, but we don't take credit risk by uh, creating this mini portfolio of world leading government bonds. Um, in the case where you don't come from a currency or have a currency with um, high uh, credit worthiness, I would say the alternative here is to accept the credit risk with the domestic government bonds or even consider um, bank deposits if you can find a very credit worthy bank. Perhaps you can pause this video and um, and you can uh, see what, what government bonds apply to you. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you have any questions or comments, I can put in the comments section. So in the next video, um, I'll be explaining why you should try to match the time horizon uh, of your investment to the maturity of the bonds. 
and that you're investing in. And also I'll talk a little bit about what kind of returns you can reasonably expect from these minimal risk investments. I also uh, uh, do the videos I mentioned on, on gold and property and uh, investments and why they're not without uh, their own issues. And also how you should think about cash in the bank, which I think is a super important topic. But in any case, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, you should subscribe to my channel if, if, if you want to hear future videos and you can share this video on social media if you think your uh, friends would benefit from watching it. But in any case, I hope to see you in the next video.